Hi, I'm Steve Tucker. I'm with the Chicago Tea Party. I am the healthcare policy leader for the Illinois Tea Party. And we're here in Belvedere, Illinois, with Americans for Prosperity speaking the truth about Obamacare. All right. Uh, my question to you is, uh, first off, uh, as a representative of the Illinois Tea Party, I would like your take on the uh, recent expansion Illinois did to allow Cook County to implement aspects of Obamacare early. Yes. They did that with the help of the votes of uh, 16 total Republicans in the General Assembly. As far as I know, the only Republicans in the country to vote for Obamacare. And they were the only ones. There were 11 in the House that voted for HB 5007. And there were four in the Senate, lame duck senators, sadly one of them was mine, John Milner, uh, lamed up because he didn't have to face anybody after they make this decision. And that whole deal was brokered by Christine Rodonio, who gave us Obamacare in Illinois. Now, it's important to understand that it's not just Cook County. Uh, nothing the Democrats do in Chicago stays in Chicago. It spreads out like a virus to the rest of the state. And if you go in and read the amendments to HB 5007 and HB 3490, uh, or Senate Bill 3490, you're going to see that it expands the Medicaid enrollment program for people all over Illinois. For instance, if you're not a urban hospital or a critical care hospital, your maximum bill if you're on Medicaid is $300. That's it, inpatient or outpatient. 300 bucks. the rest will be paid for by the few of the proud, the 53% of us who pay taxes, or even less of us in Illinois. So they did this knowing that we were only four to five weeks away from the Supreme Court's decision on Obamacare. So instead of waiting to see where it would go, they just implemented it right away. They did that because they are bankrupt. Every year, our senators and our legislators, our representatives in Illinois, just push over all of the past bills for Medicaid onto the future bill. So because they've that, that, done that, we've got $23 billion now in unpaid uh, bills in our Medicaid program alone. That's not just, that's not our pensions. That's just our health care program. And that's because Blago expanded our All Kids Covered program to two programs, Moms and Babies and Family Care. And then he opened it up to everyone. And when I say everyone, I don't just mean Illinois residents. I mean residents from other states and residents who are not Americans. And now we have 77,000 illegal aliens on our Medicaid program. And by massively expanding that program, it does nothing but disenfranchise people who the program was entitled to help, which are Americans who are truly indigent. All right, uh, one more question here. Uh, with the uh, Supreme Court ruling and the decision by Justice R Chief Justice Roberts yes. that the individual mandate is a tax, yes. even though it is not a direct tax, an excise tax, or an income tax, right. uh, do you see, uh, having read the bill or, and the ruling, any possible logical reason that he came up with that? Or is it true, uh, do you believe that he did so because he was pressured by the media and that he wanted to stay in the good graces of the Washington social circle. Yes, and the, and the lamestream media, of course. Uh, you have to understand, Kennedy fought with him for 30 days, tried to get him to change his mind and vote with the four conservatives. And we were worried about Kennedy for a very long time because he was kind of wishy-washy on states' rights. Well, he was solid as a rock. So people have to understand that Roberts was the swing vote. He's the one who gave us Obamacare. And he did it by creating what I call the Roberts tax. You see, nowhere in the First Amendment will you find uh, Section 1, Article 8 of the uh, Constitution any power for the government to tax you for doing nothing. That's the Roberts tax. And he created that all by himself. It's the same thing as you going into a drugstore and the guy asks you for, if you want to buy a pack of gum, you say no, and he says that'll be a tax of $2.50. This is what Roberts has done to us. And the only way to stop it is to support the people who are running for Senate at SenateConservatives.com and to vote for Mitt Romney. Even though he's not my greatest choice, anything's better than Obama. Yeah. Anything. And so speaking of uh, supporting Senate candidates, uh, Ted Cruz has his race here in a couple of days, yes. but we definitely need yes. him to win. Yes. Absolutely. Ted Cruz, support him. Isn't it TedCruz.com? Yeah. Uh, TedCruz.org. .org. .org. Support that man. He's got great grassroots. Actually, I saw a note. Uh, a press release from him saying that, hey, I got enough money, stop. I mean, that's how good his grassroots game is. And that's because, remember, we won 768 legislative seats, not just the House and part of the Senate, all around the country. I'm talking about state House uh, seats and sta state Senate seats, 768 seats, including governorships. Those people were motivated for one reason. That reason was health care. If you think those people are going to stay home in 2012, you're crazy. This is why Barack Obama is ramping up his Marxist rhetoric. If you got a business, you didn't build that. Somebody else built that. I like that people think they're smarter than everybody else. There's a lot of smart people out there. 
All he did was show his Marxist petticoat. And that speech wasn't even written by him. Obama, he didn't even write that speech. You know who wrote that? Elizabeth Warren. And before her, it was written by Karl Marx.